In today's video, we are going to cover a few of the features of the Nucleus dashboard. The Nucleus dashboard is our easy to use, intuitive way to interface with Docker in real time, which aims to reduce the Docker learning curve for users new to Docker, as well as provide a useful interface for more seasoned Docker professionals. For this video, we have already followed the instructions on docs.getnucleus.io and have installed the Nucleus API on a fresh Docker host for the purpose of this demonstration. Before we dive into this presentation, I want to quickly iterate the Nucleus architecture. The Nucleus dashboard is an entirely JavaScript-driven web application. This means that when a user launches the dashboard by either going to getnucleus.io and clicking on the Launch Dashboard link, or goes directly to dashboard.getnucleus.io, that connection is only used to load the application from our server to your browser. Once your client browser has loaded the Nucleus dashboard, there is no further communication with our server, and the application is entirely ran out of your browser on your local network. When you connect to a Docker host running the Nucleus API, the connection is a local connection from your client computer browser directly to that Docker host. None of the communication between your browser and the Docker host leaves your local network. We have designed the dashboard like this in order to easily update dashboard features without requiring users to roll through an upgrade on each and every Docker host that a traditional package would be installed on. For those interested in running the entire stack on premise behind their firewall, we are working on a commercial version that will be packed with new and exciting features as well as the ability to run completely isolated, which will be available shortly. To start the demonstration, we will start by covering the main sections of the application. Once logged into the dashboard, we are presented with a real-time container list. This list will show and allow you to interact with all the containers running on the connected Docker host. To the left, you will find the navigational menu, which will allow you to access the images, settings, and switch host sections of the application, as well as provides you with links to our documentation site, our GitHub account, which we use for bug tracking and general feedback, and the ability to contact us directly via Slack. Going in order, the switch host button will log you out of the connected Docker host and bring you back to the dialog to allow you to establish a connection with a new Docker host. This allows for quick switching between hosts if you are managing more than a single node. The images section of the application is a real-time image list that again provides an interface that shows and allows interaction with all images that are currently downloaded on the host. And finally, the settings section will allow the user to change the Nucleus API password on the connected Docker host. It is highly recommended that you change the password as soon as you install the API on a Docker host for security reasons. Changing the password only affects the dashboard's ability to communicate with the Nucleus API on the connected Docker host and does not affect any user accounts, the Docker daemon, or the Docker API in any way. Back on the containers page, we see that because this is a fresh Docker host, we don't have any containers currently running on the host. As we will want a few containers running to walk through our demonstration, let's start off by going over how we can run a container through the Nucleus UI. In order to run a container, we simply click on the quick launch icon located in the top right hand corner of the screen. This will drop down the Docker run bar, which will allow us to either type or paste a Docker run statement directly into it. To demonstrate this, we will quickly copy and paste a pre-written Docker run statement that will run the app container's Jenkin image and fire the image off, exposing the required ports that Jenkins needs in order to run. Once we paste the run statement and hit enter, the dashboard will instruct Docker to start to pull the image and the container will immediately populate in the containers list once the new container has been created and ran. This process could take several minutes depending on the size of the specified container and the speed of the host connection to the required Docker repository. The containers list will also automatically detect any containers that are fired off directly from the command line interface directly on the Docker host. To demonstrate this, we again will grab a pre-constructed Docker run statement that will simply run in a for loop. The loop will simply iterate over the Docker run statement 10 times, launching 10 test BusyBox containers. Again, we can see that as each container launches, it automatically populates into the container view without requiring a refresh or any interaction from the user. And finally, we will launch a single Docker run statement to launch an Apache container that again, we will need for demonstration purposes. Now that we have a few containers in our view, let's go over a few container management features. In order to administer any container in the container list, simply click on the control deck menu for any listed container. Control deck offers a unique view of what's going on in a given container. We wanted to make access to the container easy without having to make the user leave the main container list. Control deck allows exactly that. If you choose a container and click to open control deck, you will see action buttons, host links, container links, real-time port statuses, and CPU mem graphs, again, all updating in real-time. From within Control Deck and the top section along with general information, such as the image name that the container was launched from, uptime, and the IP address of the container, is where you'll also find all of our action buttons. We currently provide the basic ability to stop, start, restart, kill, and delete the container. A few things to note are that hitting the stop button on a running container could take several minutes to execute, as the container is attempting to stop all services and shut down the container gracefully, whereas kill will simply terminate the running container immediately. Also, as we can see, a running container will not display the option for delete. That option will only populate once a container is either stopped or killed. 
If you need to look at the container logs, we have provided a pop-out window that will run a real-time tail of the log data. As new logs are generated on the container, the window will auto-scroll to the bottom of the log window, allowing you to always see the latest logs without having to manually scroll down. If you wish to see all of the details about the container, you can simply hit the inspect icon, which will also pop out a window containing all of the container's inspect information. If you need to interact with the container, you can launch a terminal by using the attach button, which will open a movable browser-based terminal. This will allow you to access the command line interface of the running container. But please note, if the container was not launched in interactive mode, then attaching to the container will just attach you to the existing running process within the container. Interrupting or killing that process could stop the running container if the container was launched to only run in that fashion. In that scenario, the exec button can safely be used to process one-off commands against the running container without interfering with the running process that is keeping the container running. If changes have been made to a running container that you would like to preserve into a new image, then the commit button can be used to accomplish exactly that. In order to commit container changes, simply click on the commit button and type a new repository and image name into the modal, as well as any tag that you would like to give to the new image. If no tag is specified, the image will automatically have the latest tag appended to it. Once the new image has been created, you can easily access the image from the images section of the application, or you can run a new container from the run bar using that newly created image. Under the action button, we find our host and container links. Host links provide a quick and easy reference to any service published on the Docker host network interfaces using the host's IP, while container links simply show services that the container exposes on the container's internal IP. The primary difference between an exposed port and a published port is that exposed ports are only accessible by other containers and are not accessible by other hosts that reside on your network. Publishing a port will bind the container's exposed port to a TCP port on the host's IP address, making that service available to any other node that has connectivity to the Docker host on your network. If a host link is published on either port 80 for HTTP or 443 for HTTPS, then we automatically make those links hyperlinks that can be clicked on easily in order to access the relative services. Between our link section and real-time performance graphs, we also have our quick glance port bindings. Port bindings not only again show published ports versus exposed ports, but it shows the real-time status of those services. Because our platform runs on the Docker host itself and not within a container, we are able to perform outside-in real-time service port checks that allow a quick and easy reference of both a container's service port as well as any mapped host bindings. If a service within the container is shut down, it will immediately be reflected in the port binding section. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and use the dashboard to attach to the Apache container and shut down the Apache service. As we can see, when Apache is shut down, it's immediately reflected in the container port status section. But because the service port on the host is still mapped and listening, it still shows as active and in an up state. The final feature currently available in Control Deck is the ability to rename containers quickly and easily. To rename a container, just click on the container name and type a new name into the modal dialog. As you can see, submitting a new name automatically updates the name of the container in the container list. The next section that we will cover is host control. From within host control, you can quickly and easily see the Docker host's name, OS, number of CPUs, usage, and how much free memory is available on the host. You can also quickly see information about the Docker daemon, such as the running status of the daemon, loaded file system drivers, whether or not the build is experimental, and the daemon version. In addition to seeing daemon stats, we also provide Docker daemon control buttons. From host control, you can easily stop, start, and restart the Docker daemon with a simple click of a button. The last feature of host control is the collective container actions. From within host control, with the click of a single button, you can perform a stop, start, restart, kill, or delete action on all containers on the host. It is good to note that clicking on the delete button will only remove stop or killed containers. It will not remove any container that is up and running on your Docker host. Finally, let's take a look at the images section of the application. Images, like containers, also have control deck that quickly allows you to gather information about an image. From within control deck, you can see the image's repository, name, and tag, the layer ID, size of the image, and when it was created, as well as the image description, official and trusted status, and number of stars, all collected from the Docker Hub. You can also quickly and easily look at the image history, inspect data, or if the image is not being used by any running containers, remove the image with a single click of a button. Well, that about covers the base features of the Nucleus dashboard. We hope you enjoyed this quick tour and have as much fun using the dashboard as we had in building it. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and Twitter feed at Atlantean.io for updates on new features and additional information on Nucleus. Thanks again for watching.